Welcome ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to do a quick demonstration of how to use Logger Pro software to do some of the data analysis that we are going to do for our motion cart lab. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at this graph right here. It is the position time graph. Um, and we're going to particularly pay attention to this nice parabola shaped area of the graph. I also want to point out that uh, Logger Pro will by default show two different graphs, so the position time graph and then the velocity graph. However, your lab should um, mention the fact that you have three graphs to look at. The third graph is going to be your acceleration graph and uh, let's go ahead and pull it up right here. So what you see here on the left hand side is you see a data table that's going to have all of the data that's been collected. You have your time, so notice it's taking every 0 0.05 seconds you were taking a measurement. You have your position, velocity, and acceleration at that point. What you may notice is that you don't have an acceleration graph visible on the Logger Pro screen. So I'm going to show you how to get that. You click on the y-axis label. And you can do this on either graph. I'm just going to do it on velocity. When you click, it should pull up this uh, set of options so that you can put your position time graph there. Notice it's changed to the graph identical to the one at the top. You can graph your acceleration versus time. You can even, if you would like, graph all three plots of position, velocity, and acceleration on the same set of axes. That gets very busy, so let's take everything except for acceleration off. And um, this is our acceleration graph. I am just using a sample set of data that was collected by one of your classmates. Uh, it showed a nice parabolic curve. I also want to point out that this uh, actually only recorded for five seconds worth of data. And so we don't actually see the cart return back to the original point and then bounce away. So very quickly, I want to show you guys how to do some data analysis. We are going to apply a best fit curve to our position time graph. The way I do that is I'm going to look at my position time graph and identify the area that looks most like a parabola, a U-shaped curve. When I do that, I'm going to highlight that area by basically dragging the cursor across it. Notice that area that has the nice parabolic shaped curve actually matches fairly well with a linear portion of our velocity graph. And um, we'll talk about why this is in just a moment. So once I've highlighted that area, that's the parabola, I'm going to click on Analyze, then I'm going to click on Curve Fit. Once I do that, I'm going to see this set of options for general equations. I'm trying to create a, um, an equation that will create a graph that will match this data pretty well. Now what you'll notice is right here I have something by default selected. I can actually click this Try Fit button and it will pull up a black line that will represent um, an auto-fitted curve that the computer is saying, okay, this is your best proportional graph for uh, the data that you've seen. Now what we want to do is try to get this black line to match up with our data as closely as possible. Um, you can try other types of general equations, for example, a linear. Notice this is a straight line, just like any linear equation. Uh, it also has the formula, the general formula for these types of equations. So your general formula for a linear equation is y equals mx plus b, like you have here. Notice, once again, this does not fit our data very well. We are trying to find something to fit this nice, pretty par parabolic shape. So we're going to try the quadratic curve next. We're going to try fit. When we do that, notice it matches very well with our parabolic curve. So we're going to say, okay, that is our best fit curve, and we're going to click OK. What that does is that superimposes this parabola over this section of our data. It also gives us, if this was a parabola we were graphing, and the quadratic equation for that parabola is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, the values of a, b, and c. That's going to be the most important part for us because when we're looking at our motion equations, we will be able to use this to figure out what our acceleration is, our initial velocity, and our initial position. So that is how to find the uh, best fit curve for a quadratic equation for a 
parabolic shaped area of your position. What this means is as you had your cart um, at the motion, no, at the end stop portion of your track, notice it stayed at that position for a little over a second, then this is the area where you pushed the cart away. You pushed it away from the end stop towards the motion detector and it moved with um, what we'll find later is a gradually decreasing velocity. This is something you should have noticed when you were pushing the cart. You pushed it away from the end stop and it was going faster at the beginning. Once it started to reach closest to the motion detector, it slowed down, it stopped for a fraction of a second, and then it reversed direction. <clears throat> if you'll look here after you hit your kind of lowest point of the parabola, you'll notice that the cart began to move away from the motion detector and back towards your original point. You can even sort of get a hint of the area where the motion uh, detector was noticing or was detecting the data of the cart bouncing off the end stop. If we look at the same portion or a similar portion of the velocity time graph, what you will notice is that you had a larger negative velocity and I want you to think about what does the negative sign mean on this velocity what type of motion are we looking at? And I'll give you a hint, think direction. Remember, velocity is a vector, it has direction. Um, for this portion of the velocity curve, we have a very linear, uh, linear uh, graph here. What that means is that our velocity is changing at a fairly constant rate. When that happens, that means you have a constant acceleration. I know we haven't played with acceleration very much in class, but if you have understood the concept that velocity is the rate of change of displacement, you should be able to transfer that idea to the fact that acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. Now what we're going to do is we're going to try to do a best fit line for this area as well. It is not, however, a curve. We're going to ignore kind of these um, outliers, these strange points, and we're going to just try and fit a line that will fit to the best of um, our mathematical ability or that of the computer with this data. For that purpose, we'll go back up to analyze and notice above where it says curve fit, I have a linear fit. When I click on that, it is going to match my highlighted section of data and you can barely kind of see the brackets at the end showing that that's my highlighted section of data. Notice that there is a line fit through there. It does tend to track with the data pretty well. And if we're assuming that the formula for that line, for the equation for that line, is y equals mx plus b, we are given actually our m value and our y value. So our m value, which is our slope, is, notice the, the uh, units of it, it's 0.4587 meters per second per second which, if you remember from class, is meters per second squared. Um, that's a measure of our acceleration. We had a fairly constant acceleration at that point. What I want to point out is that your very negative velocity gradually became slower and slower. If you think about the absolute value of your velocity, notice it reached zero, and I want you to think about what that means about the motion of the cart. Uh, how was the cart moving when the velocity was zero? And then after that, the velocity became greater and greater, but this time it has a positive sign. And think about what that means for the direction of the motion of the cart. And then it reached a maximum velocity, and then it started to decrease again. If we had more of this data, we could look at the relationship of this velocity as the cart bounced. The last thing I want to point out <clears throat> is that this point right here, let me highlight it very briefly, where the velocity is approximately zero, corresponds to the position where the cart was um, closest to the motion detector. So I want you to think about where the cart was located at this point, what the fact that it had zero velocity at this point means, and use that when you're doing your data analysis. I hope that this allows you to do some of the analysis for your CART uh, lab. Unfortunately, since we're not going to 
spend as much time on this in A Day's classes, you will not get the full-on explanation that some of B Day got. Uh, good luck with your lab.